middle school. What do you think has been different these last two games for the offense? I mean, obviously the quarterback, but um, what, what's changed in terms of it seems like a total offense type thing? I think it's just a byproduct of, you know, time in the system for one. Um, you know, we're more comfortable a couple of weeks, a couple of games. Um, coach is doing a good job of kind of, you know, helping us play fast. And you've seen that last two games, got off to a good start. Um, we're scoring more points, moving the ball. And um, it's just one of those things where I think we're coming together as an offense and you can see that. As an offensive line, obviously, you probably haven't had the run consistency you want, but the pass protection has been much better than it was early in the season. What have you guys been able to get fixed? Communication, first of all. Um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely been cleaned up a lot, just simplifying things in order to play fast. And then, um, you know, we've had the same guys up there since, you know, week two. So uh, everyone's comfortable with who they're playing next to. You kind of get a better feel for how the guy on each side of you, how they set, how they see things, how you want to, you know, attack different looks. So, again, just we're becoming more comfortable with each other, and you can see that. And, you know, defenses play backup quarterbacks differently. So I think, um, you know, at first we weren't getting a lot of pressure, and now teams are seeing that, you know, you're going to have to do something because we're not afraid to just check the ball down and beat you with a 1,000 paper cuts. Speaking of backup quarterback, uh, Mike has obviously generated a lot of uh, buzz outside the building. Uh, what, there's, there's a lot of uh, curiosity if he can keep this rolling these last five quarters that he's played. Inside your building, do you, do you, do you have, have that, still, that sense of anticipation and curiosity or whatever to see how far you can take this thing? I wouldn't say it's curiosity. I mean, I've, I've known Mike for two years. I've seen how he practices and how he works and uh, how he carries, carries himself. And, um, you know, he told me a story about, like, his first kind of weeks in the league with Kellen Moore in Dallas and just how Kellen told him, he's like, I look for two things in a quarterback, self-awareness and competence. So Mike has obviously shown that he knows, you know, his strengths, his weaknesses, and he will take what a defense gives him, and that's all you can ask for. You know, he's coming in, he's doing a great job, and you want him to keep rolling. I think it's just who he is as a player, and I'm, I'm happy for him that he had this opportunity. And you want to see it continue, obviously, because we're playing well and we want to win more games. You said self-awareness and competence, correct? Yes. Not confidence, because he's pretty confident. Competence, too. yeah, competence. He has the confidence part. Yeah, too, yeah, you have to. If you play quarterback in the NFL, you got to be confident. How much fun did you guys have with the sneak attack? Was really <laughs> it was and, fun, yeah. Yeah, and also just the chance, keeping up in the locker room. Is that just part of just having fun with, with people finally seeing what you guys have seen? Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, we've always appreciated Mike, and it was great, you know, especially that home game against Cincinnati, just to hear the fans. Um, I know Mike talked about it. Like, he's like, are they chanting my name? And I was like, it was just a cool moment. Like, you know, um, obviously happy for him, and uh, spent a lot of time in this league to finally get an opportunity, and he's making the most of it. What was your reaction to the uh, trade for uh, Tardif? Yeah, I think uh, Joe said it best. You know, he's he's not afraid to get good offensive linemen. And, um, you know, Larry has a uh, championship pedigree. He's been on good teams, winning teams. And um, he wasn't, you know, dressing. He's, and he wants to play. And, you know, he might have an opportunity here. We'll see how it goes. Um, but it's always good to have experienced guys in the room. You know, you can pick their brain a little bit. You know, how they did things in Kansas City, how he sees things. It's always helpful um, just to have, you know, another resource to kind of lean on. You guys have had your best moments at MetLife so far this year. The road has not been good. Can you, as a guy that's been around for a few years, put your finger on that? Is, is, it, is it at all a byproduct of a young team that hasn't really figured out, you know, like Thursday night with the lights or whatever, maybe that affected guys? I'm, I'm not trying to make an excuse. but No, there's, yeah, there's no, like, excuse for our road performance. And there really is, you know, you don't prepare any differently um, for road games as far as scheduling goes or anything like that. Just... As an offense, you know, you have to handle the noise on the road um, and at home. You know, it's quieter. And obviously, you have the energy of the fans back this year, which has been incredible, especially the last two games. Uh, it's just been a fun environment. And um, we've come out, like I said, fast. And we've been able to kind of just feed on it, build on it, and, um, you know, win some games. Your last home game was a pretty, as you said, it was kind of a party there to some degree. Yeah. Um, 
what's your thought about kind of keeping that role a little bit on Sunday? Uh, Would love to, yeah. And, and just <laughs> as a part of that, I mean, the Bills' number one defense, what do you see in them uh, and how much of a different – you know, challenge is that for you guys? Yeah, they are a very good defense. Uh, number one, they're really good against the run. Um, they have a lot of talented players. They've been together a long time um, in NFL terms, I guess, you know, a couple of years in that system. So it's not overly complicated. They just, they play really solid, fundamental football. So um, it's a good challenge for us. I'm excited, you know, glad it's a home game. And we'll be able to, you know, be on our P's and Q's as far as communication goes, you know, get on the right people, um, you know, and just have a good game. How do you feel about having another Long Island guy on the team? Yeah, Riley? can't have enough of those guys. It's, uh, it's cool, you know. Um, a little bit older than he is, but, uh, you know, he's a Port Jeff guy, so he's a North Shore guy. I'm a South Shore guy, but we can see past our differences and, uh, you know, make it work. But it's exciting. We're, we're about halfway through the season. Just how would you evaluate how you played and uh, how you, what you want to accomplish in the second half of the season? Personally? Yeah, you personally. Yeah, uh, first couple games, not my best. Definitely a rocky start. Um, definitely coming on recently, um, playing better. And um, you just want to build on that. You always want to keep getting better and growing as a player every game. So I think, um, you know, my best ball is ahead of me. And, again, like we have a great defense, good defensive line coming in here. Exciting challenge. I thought we last week against Indianapolis. Thought we did a good job as a, a group up front against a very good D line, especially DeForest Buckner. You know, he's an All Pro for a reason, and um, I think we did a pretty good job for the most part of containing him. So as a unit, we're playing well. And personally, you know, you just want to keep getting better and growing every game. Take a few more for Greg. What was it like just to see Josh Johnson be able to come in there? It was great, you know. Um, Zach goes down, Mike comes in, Mike plays well, and then Mike has a great first drive against Indianapolis, score a touchdown, and then he's out and Josh is in. And, you know, we had never taken a snap with Josh. I asked him to go over his cadence one time in the huddle just so we could hear it. And, you know, he's a pro. He's experienced. Uh, we didn't miss a beat. Obviously, he had a great game in two and a half quarters and he had, like, almost 380 yards and three touchdowns. So that's pretty good for uh, – a guy that hasn't taken any reps with the first team. So it was, it was exciting. Um, speaks to who he is as a player, and it kind of speaks to the scheme and the, the system that we're in and, you know, how effective it can be. Do you feel at all bad for him because of the circumstances of, you know, back and forth, you know, to, from the practice squad up? That he, that now he does not get to dress um, after what he did the other day. I mean, is that – I mean, I know it's just kind of the intricacies of, of the business of the game, but how, yeah. how do you feel for him since he obviously proved himself worthy at least to be a backup? Yeah, it's tough. Um, it is definitely one of the downsides of this business that there's just a finite amount of guys that can be up at a time. And, you know, we have a crowded quarterback room right now. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate for Josh, but, you know, he's a vet. He's a pro. He understands, you know, the value he has. And he knows, you know, he can be up again. He's just got to perform well. So... That's part of the, uh, you know, the, the mental aspect of this game is when you're challenged like this, like what happens to you? Do you kind of go in and, you know, introvert and, you know, woe is me? Or do you take it in stride and know that, you know, an opportunity will present itself and you just have to be ready for it? Perhaps everybody's, you know, in the, in the media and on the sports talk radio and all that stuff's talking about this quarterback thing. How much of that gets into the locker room and what's it? What's the dynamic like in there other than you guys chanting Mike White's name with you? Yeah, uh, none of it gets in the locker room. You know, uh, Sala is pretty vocal about just ignoring the outside noise. So no offense to you guys. You know, you're right and say what you want. Um, doesn't affect how we, you know, carry out our jobs because it doesn't matter what anyone outside this building feels or thinks because at the end of the day, you're playing for your job. So Mike wants to put the best tape out there. Like he said, whether it's to continue his career here or to get an opportunity elsewhere. I want to play my best ball so that people don't say, oh, you know, he's old, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Because that's the stuff that the media and the outside noise says. It's like, oh, you're, you get to a certain age or you don't play at a high enough level for a quarterback, whatever. People want you gone. So um, if you listen to that, just it's not going to help you. So you just got to ignore the noise.